I am back on the bank and today you join me fishing a mega, mega bit of water. I've come up to fish on what is essentially an inland sea. I am on Bradley's in the Cotswolds. It's on the watermark ticket. It's a day ticket. And um, yeah, I've come up to give it a go. I've only got 24 hours. It's a bit of an ask. I'm not really prepared. I was actually going to be going somewhere else, but it's a bank holiday weekend. Everywhere is absolutely rammed. So I'm going to just have to make the best of the situation. So fingers crossed, we can, uh, we can have a bite out of here. There's some mega, mega fish. There's some really good ones in here as well. Some big fish, quite a few 40s, I believe. So there's a chance of having an absolute result. But um, we'll see what we can do. But um, I've come round onto the wind. Location's always going to be key. I've been watching the water. I've not seen anything show, but it feels really warm over here on this wind. And big pit fish, I believe, follow the wind. So I'm just using basic sort of location skills, big big bit of water fish tend to be a little bit more sort of natural in their uh, movements and follow the winds on these kind of places so um hopefully my um thinking pays off and there's a few fish around so anyway there's a rule on here where you've got to unload your kit out the motor and then take it around and park it in a designated uh, parking base or well car park um so i'm going to unload the kit get the van back around into the car park then obviously get back in there and see what we can do so yeah let's crack on and do that and let's hope we can have one right i'm just walking back to the swim now i've just dropped the car off proper bit of gravel pit there I've done a lot of casts. I've been using the grapple lead, and all I'm bringing back is tiny pieces of um, like grassy weed. So there's hardly anything out there. I'm getting hardly any resistance as well. So I think there's just very low lying patches of weed around, and it's not causing me any problems basically just been donking it around where I find what feels to be the smoothest area of silt or the smoothest spot out there and um, I've just been sort of doing a few casts sort of dropping it around that area just seeing what kind of drops I'm getting and the drops are absolutely lovely I'm gonna guess it's about 10 or 12 foot at the um, rate the leads it in the bottom so it's, it's not sort of it's not sort of mega deep or super shallow. It's definitely a reasonable bit of depth out there. But the lead's just pulling back so smooth along the bottom out of that range. It feels just like really fine silk. Just going to put the rods out then so i am using the trusty ronnie i've got matched a hatch dna bug hook baits and um i do know that the uh craze do like the putty and stuff so my tactic is basically going to be just regularly recasting just to make sure that everything is sweet now the spot in question is between two little trees on the far side and um i'm not going to fish super accurate i'm basically going to just spot a bucket of bait out in that area nice that's gone out there lovely gonna tighten them right down i've got some different line clips 
so I can clip up to it as well. Everything's going to be hopefully nice and solid. Mine in the clip. Got the old big old bobbins. Might need a bit of weight on them maybe. Sorted. Right, rod number one's out. Rod number two. Right, rod number two's out. Perfect. You know what? They are actually looking pretty sweet, those lines. Here's a little look at the bait that went out then. So um, it's mostly S7 and Bug Bordy Dumbbells in freezer bait. There's also some 10mm larger pellets in there. And there's also some of the Maxi Mix, Crayfish Maxi Mix. Um, liquids wise I added some Canon S Hydro which is nice and heavy and sticks to the bait. Takes it right down to the bottom. Also a bit of hot hemp. That just adds a little bit of a slick on the spot and tends to soak into the bait quite quickly. Let you know if there's anything out there feeding as it creates a slick if you've got a bit of a weed um, a bit of a wind on and they also put some of the dna bug liquid uh, liquid food which is a uh, kind of a little bit in between not too heavy not too thin and it coats the baits really nice and i've basically got this quite heavy mix which obviously gets down to the bottom nicely when you're on a big pit like this you don't want anything too small because it's just going to drift off and in the undertow there is a little bit of hemp in there as well just to add some extra but um, yeah, most of it is just bigger sort of bits of bait just to get down on the deck and get them grubbing. Right, the rods are fishing there. We've got three rods out. We've got about a bucket and a half of bait over the top of them. I decided to knock up another half a bucket and put that as well. Basically got into an absolute rhythm with the spodding and I just thought, let's give it another lot as well. I think the more bait I've got out there, the more of a feature it is. I basically found the softest, siltiest area out in front of me. Um, it's quite a silty area in this, in this part of the lake, it seems. And I've basically found the smoothest, nicest silt I could find. Put on the grappling lead and it was coming back lovely and smooth. There's some, definitely some patchy weed in places but I think the area I'm fishing is a lovely sort of softer area it's about 100 yards or so so um, I'm feeling happy about that but yeah I put a decent hit of bait out there and the reason for that is I've heard that fish get caught with a lot of bait on here I know people have been putting in huge amounts of bait way more than what I'm putting in um, I reckon I've probably put in two to three kilo of boilie probably a couple of kilo of pellet and half a jar of them so decent amount of bait but um, not, not a stupid amount really so um, anyway we'll see what happens but um, the rods for fishing um, I'm absolutely starving, so what I'm going to do is get the home set up, get some food on, and maybe give you a little bit of an update before it gets too dark. But at the moment, I'm feeling good. I'm already almost planning my next session on here. Absolutely loving it. It's just such a lovely big bit of water. No one's to bop. No one bothers you. Everyone's nice and spread out, and it's a lovely view behind me. You know, I've got some lovely solid trees. You know, feel very sort of sheltered and closed off from the world. And in front of you, you've got a mega expanse of water with um, some big old fish swimming around in it. So let's see if it happens. And um, I'll catch up with you in a bit. But yeah, let's get some food on. And um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Right, 
so the rigs are out and we're fishing. I just wanted to do a really quick video just to show you what I'm using um, on the sort of hook end as such. So this is the hook baits I'm using. These are the DNA Bug 50 millers and I'm using a mixture of DNA Bug and S7 um, as the main boily uh, out on the spot. Now I like to use match to hatch at the moment and um, I'm just using these because they obviously match the freebies perfectly. And these are my little Ronnie sections. So I do something a little bit different to what a lot of people do. So I actually put the hook and the swivel um, together like that, ready to go, and then mount the hook bait on it. And then I just use a little cigarette filter over the hook point, which protects it, stops it blunting off. They're lovely and soft, so it stops it getting damaged. Then I can literally just drop them into my little pot of hook baits. That all stays in there with the sort of little bit of a liquid attractor I've got on them. And so they stay nice and fresh, absolutely perfect, ready to go out into the pond. Now, if I was to get a bite or I did a recast and wanted to get the rig out really quickly, I just take the hook section that's already on the rod. I take that one off just with a little quick change link I've got, put one of these on, drop it in the margin, make sure it's balanced perfect, send it back out into the pond. Now I use the same counterweight on the rods all the time um, for my balance in the pop-up and these are balanced perfectly every time. So I know that when I put one of these on there, I don't really need to check it in the margin. I will just to be on the safe side, but you don't really need to because I know they are balanced absolutely perfect. So it's a really easy way of having the perfect balance set up for your little Ronnies um, without having to mess around too much. <laughs> Right then, we are all settled in, the home's up and I've got everything sorted now. So I've cracked open a nice tin of cider just to celebrate getting things sorted. Um, unfortunately, I didn't manage to capture the beautiful sunset. Um, it's lighting up the far bank, absolutely lovely. But um, I had to do the dad thing and say goodnight to the little one and update the missus that I hadn't died. Um, I also had to um, update the second missus, that being Hugh. Um, who called me to find out where I was and what I was doing. He'd been working today, so um, I think he felt a little bit disheartened that he went out on the bank. So I, um, I rubbed that in nicely just to update him that, uh, you know, I was up on a nice bit of water and he wasn't. So happy days. But um, no, everything's sorted. I'm really happy with how it all went. It went really well. Bait's gone out in a lovely... A couple of spots were a little bit off target, but because I'm fishing a spread, it's not going to affect me too much. But um, I haven't had any food. I'm absolutely starving. And um, I've been a bit delayed with obviously uh, being on the phone and that. So I'm going to get the stove out, put some food on and settle in. And hopefully I'll be updating you with a fish. But um, if nothing happens in the night, I'll obviously update you in the morning. And I'm giving an idea of what I'm going to do for the rest of the day tomorrow. And um, yeah, fingers crossed we'll have one. Um, we'll be showing you an absolute chunk shortly. But um, it's nice to be out in the bank. It's a lovely bit of water and um yeah i'm just happy to be out if i'm honest so um, i'm gonna finish this off get some food on and i will catch up with you later on Right, morning then. Just listen to that. All you can hear is birds. It's such a lovely, peaceful bit of water. Really, really like it. Very atmospheric. Unfortunately, didn't have a bite last night, but I've been stood here watching the water, just seeing if anything shows. It's like a mill pond at the moment. Uh, sadly, I've not seen anything, other than a lot of bird activity. But um, yeah, such a lovely place to be. It was really nice waking up this morning and having that view to um, wake up to. Lovely, peaceful and quiet. All you can hear is the wildlife essentially. It is such a nice place. Definitely fueling the fire to um, come here and do a couple more sessions, I reckon. But um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fire up the kettle, get another brew on the go, 
and then I talk to you about sort of what's been happening and what I've been doing. So uh, yeah, let's go fire up that kettle and um, I'll have a little chat. Right, so my ticket started at six o'clock, so I was a little bit late getting here, but basically my um, idea around why I've, why I've got in this area is um, there were guys sort of scattered around everywhere. Didn't really seem to be any anyone in any sort of, or any concentration of anglers sort of dictating that bites might be coming from a certain zone. So I just went on basic fish location skills, and that is on these big waters, I do think that fish followed the weather, followed the conditions. There was a lovely wind pushing in here. It was really mild. The weather was warm. I was in a t-shirt in the end. Um, so I just thought, why wouldn't the fish want to be on the end of it? I'm nice and comfortable down here. Why wouldn't the fish be comfortable down here? So that's why I got in this zone. I obviously led it around, found a nice spot. Um, the whole area just seemed to be silt, but I found basically the smoothest area of silt out in front of me. Um, it's just over a hundred yards. Um, it was kind of quite far out in the pond or a reasonable distance out in the pond that I felt um, if fish were moving through, they might potentially find it and obviously put a decent amount of bait out there to obviously try and draw their attention. Rig wise, went in with the Ronnies, obviously got a lot of confidence in them. I was a little bit cautious because they've got obviously the tungsten beads and I know the crayfish love that but I checked the rods at about midnight. Everything was fishing fine. The only thing I noticed is there was a little bit of like grassy weed coming back on the lead, which made me think that actually the air in front of me has probably got a little bit of like light grassy weed knocking about, which um, might be why I didn't get any crayfish problems because they don't like that sort of thing. They prefer the harder ground where they can sort of get their burrows and stuff. But anyway, I lengthened the rigs a little bit just to be on the safe side and sent them all back out there and they've gone absolutely perfect. They're all heading straight out to the spot. So um, I've definitely been fishing in the right zone on top of that bait. So um, anyway, I was really happy with everything. It all seemed to um, go really well and I was confident in what I was doing. So unfortunately it's not happened obviously, but um, I don't see why it won't. Um, it might be that it's a little bit too early in the year still when it hasn't warmed up enough yet. So the fish aren't massively active. These lakes take a lot longer to um, warm up where there's so much water. But um, anyway, it is breakfast time. I'm starving. So I'm gonna get some food on the go. I'm gonna have another coffee and um, I'll catch up with you a little bit. check them all and redo them, re-wrap them up and get them back out onto the spots. So we'll see what the rigs are like, see if they've been greyed at all. So that is the shorter one and no crayfish signs at all. See if it still presents. Yep, still presented nice. Right, all the rods are uh, rigged up with some fresh baits. We've got the fresh bug hook baits on there. Let's check them. Absolutely perfect. Oh, no. Uh, hit the clip and the banks ran to the left. Three rods, recast, fresh up baits, back on the spots. Happy days. Right, well, I've been watching the water a lot today and I haven't seen a single fish show. Having said that, I'm not watching the water at the moment, so you could be jumping like dolphins behind me. But um, location is obviously gonna be really, really important on such a big water. Now, there are a lot of people fishing, like I've said already several times. Um, so moving isn't really much of an option. If I did see something, I would definitely think about moving but I haven't really seen anything to go on. So 
I'm just having to sort of stay put really and just keep those rods on that spot in the hope that maybe a couple of fish or a little pod of fish maybe move through and obviously I end up getting a bite. But it's lovely being here. I've said it many times as well, but it is such a lovely place to be. It's um, a little bit noisier now because we've got a lot of water sports going on on the actual lake itself and also the lake over the back. So every now and then you do hear like a speedboat go flying around, people getting excited and shouting and that. So it's to be expected on these waters. They're obviously used by many different um, people for different reasons, um, just enjoying the water, which you can't, can't knock. I like water sports as well. I like my surfing paddleboard and that sort of thing so I, uh, I can't knock it because I'd probably be doing the same as well if I had the option to do it so but anyway hopefully we do end up getting a bite I think what I'm doing is absolutely fine don't think there's anything I can really do to change things so it is literally a case of just sitting on my hands um, enjoying being on the bank and out in the fresh air and let's just hope one of those rods rattles off before I need to go so I've got about I don't know about five or six hours left of the session so still plenty of time to get a bite so um hopefully it does happen but um anyway i'm uh i'm gonna go and get a drink i'm so hot right now the sun's just gone in a little bit with the um cover uh, cloud cover but it is warm so i'm gonna go and get myself a drink and um hopefully i'll be updating you about a fish soon so fingers crossed <laughs> So something I've noticed about this lake is the clarity of the water is absolutely gin clear, tap clear, but there's a very, very blue like turquoise tinge to it. And I'm wondering if potentially the water has been dyed and that's why there doesn't seem to be too much weed in the lake. Now there's also a lot of um, residential or like holiday homes on here. You've got a lot of water sports. So I'm wondering if the owners, I think it's owned by Watermark, I'm wondering if they actually dye the water to try and kill off the weed so it doesn't get up too bad to make it safer for the water sports and the, the people obviously with the homes on here because I'm sure a lot of those people that buy in those properties and staying in those are using it for the lake so that they can obviously do water sports maybe even swim in it potentially but yeah the water is so blue so I thought I'd um just show you with the camera hopefully it comes out okay but yeah it is ridiculously blue so there you go that's just in front of me in the margin i don't know if you can see that very well but the water color is so blue it's like turquoise it almost looks artificial which makes me think that potentially they have put some sort of dye in the water to try and darken the water slightly and um sort of prevent the weed from growing as much but it just gives it this lovely tinge to it it looks almost tropical but I wouldn't be surprised if they have put something in the water to make it look like that it probably makes it a little bit more inviting for people that are using the holiday lets or the um residential places or holiday homes whatever they are but um yeah it does look really really nice right then you join me sat in the grass on the unhooker mat and i've um, been here for a good few hours now I've been watching the water a lot and um, I've made myself a brew and um, it's been a very warm one today. Um, I've been literally drinking loads of water today but I fancied something different so I made myself a brew and if I'm honest it's not even anything in there anymore. I've drank it so I just thought that looked carpy. Um, but it's not happening. Um, I've not had anything. I've not had a single liner and no sort of indication. I've not seen a fish. I think if I was a carp personally in this weather with the pressure the way it is and the sun out I would probably be in the upper layers cruising around enjoying that sun and I'd imagine that's probably the case on a lot of waters. I've actually had a little look on um, Instagram and seen a few posts of people catching fish off the top. Does not surprise me. I am pretty sure that would be a good way to go. On here maybe not. I think it's probably still a bit too cold to water for that but um, definitely on smaller venues. But um, it is what it is. Um, a guy came around earlier actually had a bit of a chat. Um, he actually knew the channel so um, he came over for a bit of a chat and that which is cool but he would fished it a little bit and he told me that um, he has actually caught fish when it looks like nothing's going to happen and he said he has had bites out of the blue and he, he thinks it's because the fish maybe go around in um, sort of pods of 
pods of like small groups maybe or as well as probably going around in larger groups but you think sometimes there might be sort of pods of fish that sort of move away from the main stock and are looking for a feed in um, conditions that aren't really favorable so he said you know you never know you could get a bite out of blue and um end up having one so i'm holding on to that thought and hoping that it's going to happen so but if it doesn't it's been a, a lovely time i've really enjoyed it it's such a lovely place i'm definitely going to come back here i'm going to bring hugh as well and try and come back with some proper carpy weather maybe a nice big south westerly big mob front coming in or something like that and um see if we can get amongst a few but um anyway i will catch you up before i go i've got a couple of hours to go so i'll give you a bit of an update to summarize if i have caught anything at the end but um yeah we shall continue to chill and enjoy it and um i'll speak to you before i go home so the swim is devoid of rods that's because it's time to go home i'm all packed down and sadly that is um, a blank, it looks like. The kit is um, all loaded up in the van. As I've said before, very nice and convenient being able to fish, um, or at least pick up your gear and not have to carry it all around. Good on a place like this where you might potentially want a lot of bait and um, potentially might want a bit more kit if you're doing a sort of longer session. So a um, bit of food for thought for anyone thinking of coming up here. Definitely a venue to try if you've not been here. Got some mega fish near, some big ones as well. Um, definitely tricky, you've got to, be definitely on the fish even though there's quite a good head of them in here you need to be on the fish and probably fish it in better conditions than i had but anyway it is time to go home so thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and give it a like follow the social media shown at your bottom screen now if you're not already and if you haven't subscribed and you are new to this uh, channel then please smash that subscribe button for more fishing stuff coming very soon well probably next tuesday which is our uh, upload day but anyway thanks for watching if you're getting out be lucky see you in the next video boom